it's time to take five for safety. It's time for another episode of Let's Not Die Today on the Toolbox Talk Show Network. Are you a small business struggling with creating a training program? Are you looking for an easy to use, inexpensive solution? Seven tap. Micro learning made easy. Great courses in just minutes. Get 10% off the annual subscription using our special code. Check it out at toolboxtalkshow.com backslash training. Our topic today, driver safety. Let's start with some definitions. A car is a personal vehicle or a private passenger vehicle with a weight of 6,000 pounds or less. So think of a four-door car, minivan, or SUV. A commercial vehicle is a company vehicle like a work truck or service truck that can weigh anywhere from six to 20,000 pounds. We won't talk about tractor trailers, often called big rigs or 18-wheelers. That is for a different discussion. Let's talk history. There are all kinds of fun stories about the automobile. It seems every year another book or movie is released detailing some little corner of automotive history no one's ever heard about. In this episode, we're going to talk about a story in automotive history I'm pretty sure you've never heard about. Henry Ford, the man with no middle name. True, look it up. Before we get to Hank, the year was 1886 and the German inventor Carl Benz patented his Benz motor wagon. It would take 22 years for cars to become widely available. This modern marvel was the Model T, manufactured by the Ford Motor Company in 1908. But the Model T almost didn't happen. In 1903, a group of car makers formed a licensing cartel called the ALAM, the Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers. The group claimed that the 1895 Selden patent, which it just so happens they owned, covered all gasoline-powered vehicles. The association was supposedly set up to protect the public from unreliable upstarts and fly-by-night. Henry Ford was one of those unreliable upstarts. Ford already had one failed automobile company and left another before convincing some investors to back him a third time. He applied for a license twice and was denied, so he sold his cars anyway. The ALAM attacked him in newspapers and filed lawsuits to force him out of business. There was a significant problem with the Selden patent, however, no one could build a working automobile to its specifications. Ford hadn't used any part of the Selton patent to build his car, and of the 300-plus men developing automobiles, they hadn't borrowed anything from the Selton patent either. Several manufacturers went along and accepted the ALAM's terms, but others declined, waiting to see what the courts would decide. The Selton patent case came to trial in 1909, and the judge shockingly ruled in favor of the ALAM. The ruling was a massive setback for Ford and the independent auto manufacturers. Most gave up, including Bill Durant, the founder of General Motors. He joined the association and paid $1 million in back royalties. For most people, it was over, but not Henry Ford. His legal team filed an appeal, and in 1911, a three-judge federal appeals court ruled that the Selden patent was valid, but only for the automobiles made to its specifications, of which none were in existence. The result was the Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers' demands for royalties were invalid. Let's talk stats. There are approximately 276 million vehicles operating on America's roads. By some estimates, U.S. drivers make 186 billion driving trips, drive 2.62 trillion miles, and spend 70 billion hours driving. Driver-related factors for example, air impairment, fatigue, and distraction were present in almost 90% of car crashes, according to the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. Tailgating is a contributing factor in more than one-third of all crashes. In 2010, the economic cost of motor vehicle crashes totaled $242 billion, equaling 1.6% of the real U.S. gross domestic product. Nearly 2 million drivers experience permanent injuries every year, and in 2018, there were over 36,000 highway deaths. Let's talk safe driving. Safety tip number one, pre-trip inspection. Complete a pre-trip inspection. Always walk around your vehicle and complete a visual inspection. Ensure that everything appears to be okay. Check the tires, look for leaks. Are the windows dirty? Tip number two, pre-trip check. 
Inside the vehicle, adjust your seat and mirrors. Try to ensure maximum visibility and minimum fatigue. Make sure all your lights function and, of course, buckle up. Tip number three, secure items. If you drive a truck or other commercial vehicle to haul products, be sure to secure any loose items. Tip number four, stay alert. When driving, stay alert. Look in front and behind you. Use your mirrors and be aware of what is happening several car lengths ahead. Tip number five, blind spot check. Be careful of blind spots. Physically turn your head to check before changing lanes. Tip number six, following too close. Don't follow too closely and avoid remaining too close to vehicles beside you. Remember, always give yourself room if you have to react suddenly. Tip number seven, stopping. When you come to a stop and there is a vehicle in front of you, maintain an adequate distance. A good rule of thumb is if you can't see their tires, you are too close. Tip number eight, wait to accelerate. Wait at least three seconds before you start to give the motorist in front of you time and adequate space. Tip number nine, backing. When backing up or parking, take extra precaution. If you are not familiar with the site, then get out and look. Make sure you have adequate clearance so you don't run into or over something. Tip number 10, reporting. If you're in a work vehicle, report all incidents immediately. Some employers will make not reporting an accident a termination offense, so let's all keep our jobs. Following these tips can prevent accidents, injuries, and even death. Thanks for listening to another episode of Let's Not Die Today. Remember our website, ToolboxTalkShow.com, where our slogan is, just press play. As always, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you love what we do, please tell your employer about us. We love you, too. See you next time.